congratulations to you both on the film. I thought it was so powerful and so moving at the same time. I actually, at the end of the screening, couldn't believe how quiet all of the journalists were. They were sat there, absolute silence, nobody moved, even as the credits rolled up, and that's quite rare. Right. And that's a sign of, I suppose, a film that is so powerful that people were still taking it in at the end. Um, how did you feel, David, obviously, bringing it to the big screen? Because it must have been quite emotional for you too. Yeah, it was hugely emotional, I'll be honest. I mean, the whole process was. But I never, it developed over time. I mean, it began, it started with a, an effort at a book that ended up in a variety of scripts with someone else running with it. Me sitting as a rather bemused bystander, not really believing it was ever going to go there, but having no reason to turn <coughs> off the effort. But when it suddenly coalesced into Susie Farrell's, uh, I suppose I should say, overwhelming script when I first read it, um, I suddenly realised that we had something that I needed to decide whether to back or run away from. Mm -hmm. It was a very profound week where I read the script, I think, ten times, deciding, literally, trying to get myself used to the image of myself, the true image of myself that even I had not looked at properly before. So, yeah, difficult, but um, I hope it, it does what it says on the tin, basically. It certainly does. This is nothing all of a sudden. Why are you hologram? I need you to talk to me, Mr. Tit. And Julian, how did you become involved in the project? Um, well, I, I, I read it um, not knowing it was true or what it was about. Um, and uh, just, just absolutely then pulled into this extraordinary story, really, of uh, David's life um, and found it incredibly emotionally affecting. Um, and, uh, the, you know, the, the, set, the sort of sense of almost redemption at the end seemed very powerful yeah. to me and it felt like I really wanted to tell that story. And then I found out that it, you know, it was all true and met David and talked it through with him. And normally I agonise for months about do I do this project or not, but on this one it just just happened and, uh, and we were straight into it and filming and, um, you know, it felt right. Mm, yes. I was a skinny kid. Titch. That's what they used to say. You don't feel the pressure, do you? I want to win. I'm sitting there day and night to win. How involved were you on set, David? Were you there on, on certain days to oversee things or? Mm, every certain day. <laughs> every. I was there every day. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, yeah, and uh, legitimately I was there at the beginning because I was fearful of the salacious elements that are in the film um, being extracted, the rest of it mm. being put to one side, and uh, me being presented with a, a DVD one day with all the worst things, I mean, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And so I showed up um, excited, um, and very, very soon after that, was confronted with a director who was adamant about keeping it true to, true to life, and uh, a huge sense of relief. Um, and then I literally became mesmerised by the creative process, I'll be honest. <laughs> I tried to keep myself as discreet as I possibly could, stock still statue in the corner of a room. I started to move from the six inches away from Julian where I started, <laughs> to more like six feet. Um, oh. But I, I didn't have to intervene, Julian did it all. But your dad, is he here? Yeah, he's got his life. Huh? But he's here, right? Mark Stanley is superb. They, the cast are all fantastic, but Mark Stanley particularly, yeah. I mean, that's one of the finest acting I've seen. I, I thought, you know, halfway through the film, it felt like it was really you. It, I felt like he was really David. Mm. Was he always first choice in line for the film? I mean, we met lots of people, and because it's when you, obviously, when you've met somebody and know somebody, it then becomes even more complicated about how, how, how you know, finding the right person. And Susie's script is incredibly subtle. Uh, there's a mask and there's this sort of bulletproof sort of persona and yet behind it you need to sense that things aren't right, that there's, there's, there's sort of hidden demons and it's very, it was very hard to find an actor who, who could do that and um, it was really when we met Mark and he did this amazing audition and felt, also felt incredibly committed to this mm -hmm. and I think that was the key thing actually. Uh, one needed somebody who absolutely would go for it and I remember him saying to me so Julian just ask me to do anything you want on this I'm gonna go the extra mile and he really did spent a lot of time with David uh, 
a, a lot of time researching it and thinking about it, and I think it's paid off. It's wrecking yourself. You have all of this. This is nothing all of a sudden. And obviously, David, you, you are so inspirational. You've climbed Mount Everest not once, but five times mm -hmm. in one decade. Obviously, because you're the ambassador for the NSPCC. What made you decide to climb Mount Everest rather than maybe go for you know, a long run or something like that? Why Mount <laughs> Everest and five times? <laughs> what block? <laughs> it's definitely well, unusual. It's, uh, it, it was literally, I'd, I'd, done, I'd, I'd raised money in... in in very, um, discreet ways over the course of my career, and generally coincident with bonus days, I'd make a check donation. No one knew about it. And then, uh, literally 2003, I was sitting at my desk, and on the TV, I saw the Chinese summit 50th anniversary, Hillary Tenzing. And I looked up and thought, there's my next vehicle, because I'd done all sorts of crazy stuff, and I'd run out of stuff to do. <laughs> in 2005, I showed up and did it. And, um, and then I raised so much money on that first climb, 250, 270,000, uh, ten times more than I ever thought I would. I was amazed. Wow. And I thought, wow, I've got a real... And then I went back in 07 and did a crazy in 09, 11, 13, etc. And, and kept doing it. And uh, eventually, it was quite funny because in 2015, I tried to climb K2. And I re everybody really pushed the boat out for that climb. And uh, in 2017, I thought, I'll go back and do Everest again. And nobody sponsored me. Really? They said, we're done. Oh You're boring us. <laughs> Don't, you can't So you're not planning on doing us. it again then? <laughs> no, I'm not. And in fact, it was a relief to walk away. I was tired of it. Oh. Tried to keep it away. Build this pristine life. Of course, finally, you're bringing the film to the Glasgow Film Festival for the world premiere. How excited for you to be bringing it to an audience? Great. I mean, absolutely. I mean, you, you work away in a little room on this and, uh, you know, honing it. And it comes a time and you've got to got to show it and I just hope that um, obviously it, it, it's quite a ride there's pretty extraordinary details of David's life that we go through uh, I hope it's you know has emotionally affecting but also I think it's I think it is the type of film that will have people discussing and thinking about it mm. well after they leave the cinema which was always the aim that's very true well thank you so much for talking to us today thank, thank you, you. Really nice good. to meet you thank you